Hello, we're going to look at the lab two circuitry. And this section in blue is the part that we're going to look at in more detail. The bottom part is for another lab. There are two L293 motor drivers and a yellow and red LED. The yellow for the battery, the red for the five volts. There are three of four switches used to control the power to the motor drivers, to V in, and to the Arduino. Power comes into the circuit at this point here. That's from the battery. And there is a second fuse that is connected to the output of the 5 volt regulator, this one. That's the 0.25 amp. There are three buses on the circuitry. There's the ground at the top and the ground at the bottom, plus 5 volts. And the bottom rail, the yellow rail, is for the battery voltage. Here I'll remove the regulator so that you can see the components underneath. And you can see there's a ground connection to the center and two capacitors, one for the input and one for the output. And you can see the, uh, the right-hand terminal will actually connect to the bus through that fuse, the 0.2 amp fuse. And those two capacitors are there to reduce noise. These two wires are coming from the battery pack and I have a switch. And what I did here was uh, splice the wires and I used heat shrink tubing. And I wanted to change the wire colors to yellow and black. So I'm gonna join these to the board. So the black is going to go to the ground and the yellow, watch where it goes, is to the side on the fuse, which is the 2.5 amp fuse. That's going to supply power to all of the other points we need power to. Now I'm going to attach the two motor wires and these go to pin number three and pin number six on the motor driver IC. It's really just to the left and to the right of the ground pins. Now let's turn on the power and since all of my switches are closed, the red LED comes on to indicate five volts. The yellow LED comes on to indicate I have battery voltage. As indicated before, I have three switches. The first one is to power up the eight volts. So if I open that switch, cuts off the yellow LED. I don't have eight volts anymore, but I still have the five volts to the motor drivers. And now if I close that switch, or sorry, open that switch, it cuts off the five volts to the motor driver. I still have not connected V in and ground to the Arduino, and I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to connect that wire to the connection point of the diode. It's actually the cathode of the diode. And what I did here is stripped away some wire and I soldered it or tinned the wire so that I could connect it to the protoboard. So that's going to the cathode side of the LED. Okay, you can see that there. Then I'm gonna plug that yellow wire uh, to V in, but I'm gonna turn off the battery before I make those connections. And sorry for my hand being in a way, but now you can see it's connected to V in. But obviously we also have to have a common connection to ground, and I don't have that connected yet. So I'm gonna take another black wire and connect that to ground. Now that I've got the VN connected through that diode, it actually turns on the power to the Arduino board. And you'll see that the green power LED illuminates, so that's telling me there's power to the Arduino. You can also connect it to the USB. When it does, it actually cuts off that other power automatically. Now I'm going to reclose the five volts and the battery supply to VCC2 of the motor driver. So now I have all three things powered, the Arduino, the five volts, and the uh, battery supply. And it's probably best to do it in this order. Uh, turn on the Arduino first, the power to the five volts second, and then the battery supply third. So the Arduino, red LED, then yellow LED. You can also just have all the switches closed and when you turn on the battery, all three get turned on simultaneously. So that's fine. Now I'm turning on the motor. So 
so you can see and hear the motor turning and it's turning because I've done a few things I added a wire to pin 1 2 and 7 manually to get it rotating in one direction okay that's why there are three extra pins on the L293 driver now and now I've switched wires two and seven so that it rotates in the opposite direction and again that's two and seven they have to be at different logic levels to switch from one direction to the other direction okay I've also made some wiring connections here I've added a, a wire to the analog input zero and I've connected a red and black wire from the bottom board to the top board so that I'll be able to operate the variable resistor and I've also connected a white wire in the middle to the analog zero input on the Arduino board. So this is going to allow me to control the speed of the motor now because my software is set up to do that. So let's start off by looking at the voltage regulator. This is a 7805 and the yellow line at the input indicates that we have to have the battery voltage there which must be a minimum of seven volts for the regulator to give you five volts out so for this device the dropout is two volts that's the difference between the output and the input make sure the middle terminal is connected to ground and the capacitors are attached and also connected to ground so this is an important part of your supply circuitry this part of the circuit is the output from the regulator and it has the 0.25 amp fuse. It's the smaller one. It has the TEX025 written on it. After that, you have a red LED. The anode connects to the five volts through a 1K resistor to ground. And then you'll notice there's a terminal label VCC1. That's going to go to the motor driver. And it's on pin 14 of the motor driver. So there are three switches. The left hand one goes to the VCC for the five volts. The metal one goes to VCC two for the battery voltage to the L293. And then the third one on the right goes to the Arduino VIN. Make sure the polarity of the diode is correct. The cathode is going to the V inside, the anode going to the switches. The last part is the connection to the Arduino and there's really only two connections for power. One of them is a connection to ground and you can use either of the two terminals and the wire from the diode must go to V in. And for things to work correctly the voltage on that V in pin must be at least 7 volts. So it's important that your batteries are charged. Now the LED that you see on the screen right now is the yellow LED, which is an indication that you have power for VCC2. I hope all this helps out when you're doing the lab. And if you have any questions, please send me an email. Thank you. These are a couple of student demos. One of them is in the maze. So the robot is using ultrasound to find its position and turn left and turn right and so on. This other one is actually, I think, lab four, where you're going to be driving the motor in one direction, the other direction, forward and backwards. And this gets to be a little fun.